Okay, we just finished assignment six, and that was our logo design project. But when I was sketching for ideas for my logo, which was all based on a, the idea of a forking bull, here are some of the different ideas, and then I ended up actually doing some more, right? And ended up really liking these and finishing that up, and that's what I put into Photoshop and added effects to and worked with, right? So that works as a logo. And this is what's called a pictorial logo or an iconic logo. It's just an image and it's mostly just cut out shapes even though there's some nice colored gradients in there and a drop shadow and a white stroke, but it works pretty well scaled up and down. That is very different than this next round of ideas, which are called spot illustrations. Spot illustrations do not scale as well. And they're usually a, more detail heavy. They have more varied line weight. In fact, you start to have what's considered line art, right? Whereas with this logo, the lines became the edges of shapes. Everything got filled in with a solid color, which is kind of what Illustrator is perfect for. In a spot illustration, these lines might stay lines. So how do we get that? Well, there's a few different methods. So one method, let's go to assignment seven. This was our spot illustration assignment. One method is just to sketch it out by hand, right? So this was sketched out in pencil and then scanned in. But then you can also modify it. So once I scanned it in, then I went back and thought, well, maybe that's just a little too typical looking. I started to add some stuff. And then because it was scanned in anyway, I started to stretch it a little and modify it and move some stuff around. And then I thought, well, this was pretty cool. I like this. It's pretty refined. But then it just, it's also a little ridiculous, right? This bull with these um, eight hooves sticking out of the, like an octopus sticking out behind the text and forks everywhere and all these little accents. So I decided I would ink uh, just the portion of it that I wanted to keep. So that's what I did. I took a piece of, of Canson tracing vellum, which is a spun plastic tracing paper, which is very clear, and I scanned it. And then I put it into you know, on our scanners at the back of the room. And then I put it into my folder in the class Dropbox, the folder where you print things. And so this is no longer pencil. This is scanned ink. And when you scan ink, so I download it now from Dropbox. You can do the same thing with our scanner. All right, I'll bring it into my assignment seven folder. So this is just a refined sketch. And when you scan ink, it's a puddle of ink, right? You can see the texture of the tracing paper. But you can see how that's more shape-based as a line than the pencil that it came from. Because pencil is just graphite ground into paper, right? So you see how soft those pixels are? Well, the ink line is going to be cleaner. And I also scanned this at 600 pixels per inch. Now, before I mess with it much more, I can clean it up, right? And I can clean it up right in preview by going to Tools, Adjust Color. And I can do this in Photoshop as well. But I can go to Auto Levels. I can play with the contrast, like really pushing the light's light and the dark's dark. And you can see how that really cleans up the ink line. But you'll still see some color at the edges. And that's because we always scan at full color you get a better scan that way than just scanning uh, black and white. And then I can actually brighten the shadows, which will help with that edge. I want to keep the highlights bright. I can take the saturation down. And you'll notice just every once in a while you'll get pretty clumsy uh, edges just from where it's soaked into the paper. So I'm going to darken the midtones a little bit and then brighten the highlights some more. So you're finding the mix of what's necessary. 
kind of clean up your line work scan as much as you can. But this, because it's pixel based, you see all those little gray remnants, right? So it's best to have this as a vector. So how can we get this ink line as a vector? Well, now that we've cleaned it up quite a bit, remember preview automatically saves when you close. So now I'm going to work with its arrangement a little bit and I'm going to open it with Photoshop. And we're going to use some of our raster skills before we bring it in as a vector. And the first thing I can do is I can clean up any little remnants that are sticking around like that. And one way I can do that is to uncheck contiguous, select all the white space, and then do select and mask, right? So I don't want to feather it much. I just want to shift the edge and grow it a little bit. I don't want any feather because I want it really sharp. And then for the preview, let's see, high quality preview. And that's showing me what it's going to cut out see? or what it's going to select. So I say OK and I hit delete. And I'm going to fill it with 100% white because it's a background. So now it's a little cleaner. It's got that slight gray drop shadow still, but it doesn't have any like little debris. So that's one way you can clean it up just your inks. Now where the gaps are small, like in between these little teeth, it's going to stay that gray. So the next thing I can do is I can go to image adjustment levels. I can look at those spaces like the gray and I can try to brighten the midtones and then darken the shadow. Right. While still not losing the edge of the line. That looks pretty good. You can brighten the highlights. Yeah, so this is looking pretty darn good. Now every once in a while, the inking will get thin. If I need to for there, if I'm really trying to control it, I can dodge and burn, right? So if I know I need this to be darker, I can darken the midtones just on this. just here where the ink was a little thin but I can clean that up in Illustrator too. The other thing I can do is I made I uh, stole a lot of this magnificence all these little um, accents from my bigger illustration that I decided to pare down and now what I can do is I can play with moving those different places. So if I hit command X and then command V it will paste it onto a new layer and then I can set it on multiply mode so all the white disappears just like we did with our cartoon jumble and I can try putting these in some different places where I think they might need it. I can transform them and we can use some of those compositing skills. There's a reason we did those first. right? So I'm trying to make a fun t-shirt design here or sticker. I don't want it to look too generic so I'm going to move this one around, command X, command V, <laughs> paste it onto a new layer, turn it to multiply mode, and then move it and see where might this be helpful. And then of course it can always be deleted if it's not helpful. I don't know if this one's too helpful. <laughs> Let's try rotating it. I'm just trying to have some action lines, give it some energy. I can stretch it, play with it. Little accents. Give some movement to the design. 
Same thing for all of these. Command X, and then Command V to paste it on a new layer, change it to multiply mode. And in this way, you can stretch all of your stuff. You can transform it. Squeeze it in a little. Tilt it a little more. And you can simply try different things with your illustrations all in Photoshop using your compositing skills. The reason I'm doing Command X instead of Command J is because I want to take it off of the original layer and then paste it in on a new layer. So Command X is cut, but it cuts and also copies to the clipboard so you can hit Command V and paste it back in. I'm going to double this one up, but because they're on their separate layer, I don't need to worry about them touching or overlapping. You can use the arrow keys to kind of nudge it in. And these are just little augmentations, right? Little decorations. The complete wrong thing for a logo, just to have useless decoration that just makes it more visually exciting. But that's kind of where spot illustrations live with those kind of embellishments. But it, of course, it depends on your style of spot illustration. And if you like, you can experiment with embellishments totally by hand with pencil or pen, and then only use the computer to kind of solidify your choices. But I really like the computer as a bit of a design tool here. I try to leverage its, its abilities. I don't think I like that. So what's interesting about line art is the line itself has a thickness, right? And because the line has a thickness, as you grow it and manipulate it, that thickness will change. So if you're going for a really technical spot illustration where the lines are all the same width, we want to be careful about modifying the thickness with the size and placement of things. Showing you how useful that multiply layer style is, or blending mode is. All right, last one. Now what's great is I can leave these all in the vector and then just turn them off, turn off the individual paths once they're made. So I'm giving myself a lot of options here. Well, that's kind of a nice highlight in the R. Be a nice highlight in the O. Now my design has text already in it. Your design does not need to have text, but this is a way of showing you how text is just like an illustration. It's no different. Okay, so there it is. Now I can see that there's also a bit of an issue with my illustration in my inking. Everything turned out basically like my sketch, except for, so here's my sketch. Or here, no, there's my inking, let me see. Here's my sketch. And you're gonna turn in your sketch or your sketches, right? But basically my upper lip got a little too thick. Now I could go in, in Photoshop and kind of erase that out. But the problem is, 
Like I'll show you just on a, a new blank layer, I can paint with white and kind of cut it out. 